Oh, we got a full <laughs> audience here. Uh, uh, thank you very much for coming to Verge Free Day. And uh, the first presentation will be the keynote. And we got uh, many other presentations today uh, from the speakers around the world, from the United States, from China, from Europe, and from Russia. And uh, let's begin. So uh, I'd like to start with uh, why we are here today. So we are here because of First Free Day, which unites people. And First uh, Free Day allows uh, all human activity to be carried out, for example, to facilitate these areas of human activity, starting from money making and uh, from continuing with learning and finishing with entertainment and actually uh, it can be used for just everything for example in this uh, screenshot you see uh, a screenshot of an application published on our forums just recently where grandfather creates a toy for his granddaughter so yeah this is also possible for with verse 3d so uh, Mostly, uh, we'll be talking about uh, 3D e-commerce today. So it's like about money, money is important. And uh, what we see is the rise of 3D e-commerce systems. And you will see it today from a schedule, we got several uh, speakers uh, exactly speaking about 3D e-commerce or B2B uh, systems. And uh, for this reason, Kronos, a consortium known for here, their graphic standards, formed recently a group specifically to establish standards in e-commerce. So we are proud to be part of this group here, you see, Soft Soft, Microsoft, and so on. <laughs> so uh, before, it's like uh, several years ago, 3D was like a toy, so it's like expensive thing, unnecessary thing. We don't need it because we have a wonderful website. Why do we need 3D? It's like, uh, it's like it's slow, it's uh, expensive. But now what we see that everybody wants 3D, so we just want it, but don't know how to do it, but still want it. So and why is that? This is because basically of this, so, 3D basically increases sales, it provides better customer satisfaction, and finally, more profits. So, yeah, uh, it's like a difficult thing to do. And uh, while starting enthusiastic, people just, okay, how do we proceed? We want to proceed, but wow, it's so, so difficult, and it's not, we don't know how to do this, it's, we need a team or we need money, I, I don't want it. So there are problems, and the problems are that uh, the web is originally 2D, it's like plain documents, served from remote locations via and seen via the browser. So here, like typical e-commerce website. So we got images, we got prices, we got names, descriptions, we got product categories, shopping cart. So it just works, it works beautifully, but it's basically 2D and it is generated on the server as 2D documents. And all existing infrastructure is 2D. So we got problems when we try to upgrade these to some 3D presentations. And uh, once uh, people want to start with 3D commerce, they just uh, face these harsh headaches and uh, a need for advanced team of front-end and uh, back-end developers and 3D artists and designers and uh, everything makes it uh, like expensive, prolonged process. Um, almost impossible to, to proceed. So here we come with Verse 3D, because Verse 3D basically allows for creating highly dynamic, engaging 3D content 
and uh, with existing tools. So you got a 3D artist who already know how to use these tools. And this means that these 3D artists can use Verge 3D. We got an artist-friendly environment for scripting called Puzzles. We got uh, the possibility to integrate with website builders. So uh, an artist, the same artist, can create uh, user interfaces using HTML, CSS, hidden in these website builders. And basically, you can integrate this 3D presentation with any infrastructure. So we got here several customers who will be speaking about CPQ systems. And basically, this allowed these customers to use their 3D with success. Uh, speaking about learning, we got the same set of problems. And uh, basically, you need some engaging content, which we user will use to like uh, selecting different paths on this image and sending some uh, state changes to the backend. And for this, um, some of our customers used uh, the standards, Core, which is basically a web-based standard for communicating between um, present web browser presentation and the backend. And again, uh, here the main trouble is to create beautiful content so that it can be used uh, for e-learning purposes. Uh, and another point I'd like to highlight is that Virtual D is not a cloud and it basically allows other web services, clouds, to integrate it easily so that the end users only deals with one web service instead of two web services and uh, this is much easier and more robust solution. And basically this also allows to uh, be offline or to run on the private network or run in some private environment, which is important for, for example, CPQ systems. And uh, if you need it, you can pack it to a mobile desktop application as well. So here, I'd like to make a pause and invite my brother Alexander to continue. And to he will be speaking about some development uh, things and our future plans in development. Alexander. Uh, hi all. And the first thing things I'd like to say is uh, this one. I mean, the great battle between Blender and 3ds Max users. <laughs> and uh, actually, let's make a poll. Uh, who uses Blender here? Please raise your hand. And uh, who is uh, 3ds Max guy? Two, three, four. Four, five, <laughs> five and a half. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit uh, unexpected. We actually thought it would be uh, one person, one, two persons. Yeah. Uh, of course, in soft as soft, we don't think in terms of battles. We believe that supporting two major modeling suits in our software is uh, our main uh, achievement, actually, because see it yourself. Uh, when we do something, we, ta we always take diversity into consideration because some things should be uh, made on top of Blender on or 3ds Max. Some things should be integrated in the engine's core, in the virtual core, and some things should be uh, implemented on top of puzzles. Uh, this, this approach helps us to keep balance at uh, uh, balance the development, uh, make uh, our products more stable, more robust, uh, think about architecture, think about bigger stuff. And as such, uh, uh, we actually, there is no difference, almost no difference between Blender or and 3 Max. So we, ke we keep them, uh, we keep them the same. The features are almost the same. And uh, another thing is Cinema 4D. Some of you ask, ask at, asked us about uh, supporting Cinema 4D in Virtual uh, Not yet, 
but uh, since uh, Maxon developers announced uh, their intention to support uh, GLTF 2.0 in uh, their software, and since VersiD already supports uh, this standard, uh, it won't be a problem for Cinema 4D users to export their assets right in VersiD and load it either directly or via puzzles, via dynamic loading puzzles. And uh, the same, the same things true is true for Maya and uh, SketchUp. They all have GLTF 2.0 exporters. Okay, what we are about to do? Uh, first of all, I'd uh, like to say a few words about these two. Uh, we, of course, we support them. These these features in VersiD. However, we don't like the current status. Uh, in regard to VR and IR support, uh, we have hurdles uh, introduced by rapid development of WebXR specification. It's quite it's changing like on the daily basis, and there is no browser on the market which supports it properly. So that's a problem. Um, the only thing we, we can rely on is the older specification WebVR and this 